So to begin with, we're going to start looking at place value and more so expanded notation, how we can actually break up a number, whole numbers or decimal numbers in expanded notation form. Now, to really be able to do this, we need to first take a look at place value and what place value sort of represents when we do with numbers. Now, I'm hoping that you've got some experience with place value before, but essentially, when we have a number, so let's just say I've got the number 3,468. All right, each one of these digits represents something unique and something specific to the number. We can think about this like breaking it into its different parts. And, you know, starting with a three here, this three represents how many thousands or lots of thousands that we would have. So in this case, we have three lots of our thousands, okay, which we can write as 3,000 or we can go three times 1,000, for example. And the four represents four lots of our hundreds, our tens represent uh, six lots of our tens and our units here represent eight single units, which when we're not dealing with um, parts of numbers, you know, decimals, fractions, um, the units is going to be our smallest uh, value that we're representing here. So what you will notice here, though, is if we add each one of these columns up, we'll end up with the original value, that 3,468. And essentially, when we're going to break numbers down into expanded notation, we are looking to break it down into the sum of its parts. And let me sort of demonstrate that, you know, with some examples here. So we've been asked initially to represent the number 208 into expanded notation. So if I put the 208 here, so 208, we always kind of make sure the unit digit is in the units column, then work to the left. We'll notice here that we start with 200s. So we've got this 200 that we're beginning with. And we've got zero tens. So zero tens is like zero times 10, which is just zero. So we can ignore that. And we've got eight units. So we've got eight units like this. And if I line it up in its, um, in its place value column, we can see here that we can add these together and this will give me eight, zero and two, which is what we're looking for. And essentially we've now broken it down into its parts. However, when we wanna represent this in expanded notation, we're just writing it simply like this. We're writing it as a sum of its parts. So this is equal to two hundreds plus eight units. Now you might sometimes see this as two times 100 plus eight times one. That's also breaking it down into expanded notations, just thinking about it in a different way. Uh, but both are gonna be you know, representing the same sort of thing. We're gonna focus on the top line on our breakdown for now, but just understand that we can represent it as the second line as well. So let's work through these other couple of problems here. So let's just quickly erase the number that we threw in here. We've got this 5,468. Now, if you're sort of, I can pick where the 5,000 goes straight away, but if you're not 100% sure, just start at the other end. So we've got eight, six, four, five. And now we want to sort of break down its parts. And this one has four parts to it. It's got five thousands, four hundreds, six tens, and eight units. So we've got five thousandths, which is going to be five thousand. Um, plus four hundreds, plus six tens, plus eight units. And we've now broken it down into the sum of its parts, which essentially is what expanded notation is. And we kind of just repeat this now. So each number, um, we're getting bigger and bigger as we go. So it's just remembering what our columns actually are. So I've got up to 10 millions here. Um, this does keep going, by the way, infinitely that way. It just keeps going, going, going. As it does this way, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But um, yeah, so we'll get to that in a minute. But let's just write down our number here. So we've got, uh, well, let's just do it this way. Uh, the 34, like that. So we've got 34 thousands, or so 34, 30, let's start this again. We've got three ten thousands. So that's 30,000. Or three lots of our ten thousands. Um, we're adding four of our thousands, so that's 4,000. We're adding three of our hundreds, so 300. Eight of our tens and two of our units. 
And essentially, this is how we sort of just break it down into expand notation. It's the sum of its parts, sum meaning that we're adding the parts of the number all together. Now, I did briefly mention that this number line does infinitely go extend either way. Let's have a look what happens when it goes this way to the right here. Now, what happens when we start going to the right is we start dealing with parts of whole numbers, which we can refer to in fraction form. We can also refer to it in decimal form. Now, often what we've got down in here, um, like, well, why so often? What we've got down here is it represented in decimal form. However, it's very important to note how each of the place values um, refer back to the units. So for example, when we broke down this way, our units were ones, our tens were tens, hundreds were hundreds, and thousands were thousands. When we start dealing with decimals, it kind of follows the same sort of pattern, except what we've now got is a fraction. So tenths are one over 10. Hundredths are one over 100. Thousands are one over 1,000, and 10,000 is one over 10,000. And it continues and continues. So what we've actually got, when we've got a number such as 36.5, we've got three tens, we've got six units, and we've got five tenths. So the way that we can think about this, well, initially it's sort of the same sort of thing. We've got, you know, three tens, so this is three by 10. Uh, we've got six units, so we're adding six by one, and we've got five tenths, so we're adding five times one tenth. Now, of course, three lots of our tens are going to be 30, six lots of our one is going to be six, and five lots of our tenths is going to be five tenths. So we add in five over 10. And what we've now got is our number represented in expanded notation. Now, yes, my expanded notation does have uh, fractions with it, but it's really, really good to get used to that um, as well. Now, for those of you that know how to simplify fractions, we could actually simplify this. <clears throat> But this will probably be more, be more of an advanced thing for later on. But we could actually simplify the fraction itself here by looking at 5 over 10 and dividing both the top and bottom by 5, which will give us 1 half. All right. And that's going to be an equivalent fraction, but that'll be a video that we'll be looking at um, shortly. But for now, we're just really focusing on getting our answer to that sort of step just here. So let's have a look at the next question here. So we've got 3.02. So what that tells us is we've got three holes, we've got none of our tenths column, but we do have two of our hundredths column. So when we break this up, we've got three of our units, we've got zero of our tenths, and we've got two of our one hundredths. Now, three of our units will be three. Zero of something is going to be zero. And then two of our little one hundredths is going to be two over one hundred. And we've now written that in its expanded notation. So let's just try one more just to finish off this uh, sort of video here. So we've now got 100.53. So just putting them down into our place value boxes. What this tells us, we've got one of our hundreds. No, no, not hundreds. We've got one of our hundreds, I should say. So that's one times 100. We've got zero of our tens, so I'm going to kind of ignore that. Zero of our units, so I'm going to ignore that as well. But then we've got five of our tenths and we've got three of our one hundredths. So when we kind of expand this out, so one times 100 will be just 100. Five of our little tenths will be five tenths. And then three of our one hundredths will be three over 100. 
And that's how we kind of get things into expanded notation. Now I'm gonna leave it here. Yes, I could simplify fractions in that last problem as well. But for now, let's just leave it at getting it into that initial expanded notation. So my advice when we're following this is write down the number into its different columns and then start using the columns to break down what does each individual digit actually represent. All right.